Let's kick it off in three, two, one. Big John, back at it again. I will tell you, I'm going to premise this for our listeners and our viewers if you're listening to us on YouTube and watching us. And if you're not, go subscribe right now. We'll have it in the link in the show notes. I am wicked tired, as they would say in Maine, because that's where I drove from this morning. Got back about an hour ago, but so dedicated to this podcast that I'm here making it happen even after driving 11 hours through nine states. Ready to roll. Let's do it. Yeah, you made me look like a liar. I, I told all I told everyone that you wouldn't be here, that I was going to I was panicking. I had to find a topic. And here you are like the like a knight in shining armor. You just come galloping back, back from Maine galloping to save the day moose. on a moose. On a moose, you didn't hunt them. You became one of them. You are now that, their leader. Well, that's a hell of a mantle to have. Um, I will say <laughs> that. Honored, though, that I am. Um, well, I read the room, and I just like I, I just caught the air of disappointment from all of our listeners, and so I just <laughs> I don't think, I, made it I don't think that's true. I got a lot. I got hundreds of DMs, hundreds, maybe thousands, saying, Big well, John, you got this. Well, number one, I appreciate that our listeners care so much. Number number two, if this first off tanks, then that's why. Well, well my mom has a thousand Twitter accounts. Nah. She doesn't know how to access oh. any of them. So she <laughs> she just tells them uh, to – she goes on Alexa. She's like, Alexa, DM John, and then they all DM me. I wondered why I got so many new followers, and that makes sense. I mean, we're, yeah, that's literally why we have so many listens. Honestly, yeah, probably is. Uh, <laughs> we're really good at self deprecating at this hour. Um, anyway, yeah, so um, back from Maine, the great state of Maine, I know it's not part of Appalachia, still just as beautiful. Um, and, you know, saw a couple moose up there, um, hunted a couple birds. It was a good time. Uh, and I come back to the great. Is it moose or meese? Well, as their leader, um, I will stipulate that it is moose. I, I see. I agree. I mean, obviously that's the the case, but it's just so weird. Why isn't it just goose, not geese? As someone who is not qualified to speak on that subject, um, <laughs> I will crowdsource an expert and let you know. Um, we'll get a linguistic professional in here or something. Anyway. I was, you know, coming back into Virginia, um, reading the Twitter, which is always a mistake, but we do it because we're addicted. To my great dismay, John, I saw the bastardization of Christianity take place on the front steps of the Nashville City Hall. And what do I mean by that? Uh, well... A 10,000-person praise concert. Praise, as in hands in the air, mask don't care, get it out of here. Praise God, because he's going to protect us from the coronavirus. And and the way they do this is that they get it classified as a protest, so it's protected under constitution. It is... And one of the claims is that no Christian has uh, been impacted by coronavirus. As you know, um, to which I say, that's interesting. I thought the president was a Christian. No, he is a, he can't be Christian. He is the Christian. So uh, I, I so get what they're this saying. That's why we have the show, right? Because if it's just me here talking, um, I would not have had that context. I wouldn't You're not going to make had, any sense. You know, the soothsayer of the Messiah here, Big John Eisner. Uh, 18 Husky. I, Hey, I don't know if you've seen my polls, but I poll through the roof with Evangelical. Through the roof. I never sell any of these polls. Um, but... First off, you, you... Look, there was probably a poll that said before you knew anything about Big John, after you knew anything about Big John. Because beforehand, I've been told multiple times I look like a conservative. So just walking up on people, I want. But unfortunately, if they did any fact-checking, 
shit. I yeah, they found out you're this raging uh, Marxist communist liberal. Don't start. Don't already don't start this taken bullshit. Away. I've already, already seen. Taken away by you. I've. <laughs> I've I've already seen the Apple Podcast reviews. I've seen well, they're the on our Facebook website. reviews. <laughs> yeah. I I, I want to make like a video of uh, at the at the end of 2020. I want to make a video where it's just like us celebrating one year, and it's all those reviews. It's like I tried to like it. How dare you ruin a movie? What was the other one too? It was um, uh, high minded goofs. Pure self-righteous cuts. Uh, I hope I hope someone else takes this and <laughs> runs with it. <laughs> See, that, well, look at me now, Mom. That, look that at me now. That one, I will say, cut deep. Uh, but, but, yeah. but yeah, back but my to mom this praise rally, it got me thinking, um, what the fuck? <laughs> All right, now put your, okay. Like, I want to. I just want to ask you, like, put yourself in Jesus Christ's shoes or sandals. I think he was barefoot a lot of time too. Put yourself in his in his, his Birkenstock. Birka. Yeah, JC is I call him shoes or sandals, Birkenstocks. Yeah. You know, or Bethlehem stocks, Crocs. Yes, Crocs. Right. Deadly virus is going around. What do you want your people to do? And 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 wait wait and remember Praise. remember your goal your goal here is <laughs> to proliferate your population of people not to reduce them. We're talking about quantity. Oh. Oh, uh, not no, quality no, because definitely not at this point. <laughs> not not sure that side of the the aisle would exist True. right now if that was the case. <laughs> uh, if I'm if I'm in his shoes, I'm probably not liking what I'm seeing. I'm I'm probably do you remember in the 90s John Madden was like the commentator of all NFL commentators but he always no matter what a team could be up 40 to 6 and he would still talk shit on the quarterback that's <laughs> that's that's who I am right now I'm the John Madden of Jesus Christ that's who I am right now at that point I think that I <laughs> please cut that <laughs> I mean, there's some holes there. I, well, first of all, he didn't ever have anything bad to say about Brett Favre, but we won't get into that. Brett Favre. Uh, Brett Favre never did it. Well, he, he never did a couple wrong. of dick pics. That was pretty wrong. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> first <Got> off, <laughs> first off, al allegedly. Alleged. Dick. Second, it was a blurry right. finger. Alleged dick. <laughs> True. Uh, <laughs> and uh, second off, that's no place for John. Swollen finger, he right? doesn't care about. Yeah, that. well, that's well. Pro you know, one could argue that a praise rally isn't either. But here we are. Now, if I'm Jesus, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, like, this is a numbers game right here. We're playing. This is like straight mo money ball with uh, followers. Um, it's kind. Of, it's. <laughs> it's I kind of like movie. you know. <laughs> I don't. It's fucking stupid. I don't think there's any other way to spin this. There <laughs> is nothing holy, and I like. I'm look. I'm speaking with a, a a modicum of authority. I'm a Christian. There is nothing holy, nothing sanctimonious, and there's damn sure nothing that is going to prevent you from getting the coronavirus. Uh, going out to a rally like that, and just hoping that the spirit guides you away from a airborne illness. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things, look, uh, everybody makes mistakes, and I am I guess I'm talking about the big guy on this one, maybe he also made some mistakes, not sure, uh, but you can cut that. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, look, everybody uh, is not intelligent, okay? Not, not everybody can be. Prove that. Some people... Some people are followers. They're sheep. The funniest thing, Chuck, that I find about all of this, if you were to go to one of those rallies, Chuck, and you were to interview all these people, and you said, wait, 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 sir, why are you not wearing a mask? First answer they give you, because I'm not a sheep. What's the number one thing they're doing? Being sheep. The people who say that they're not sheep are sheep. They're followers. They're not leaders. These are the people that 
continue to do these things. They're unfortunately going to keep doing it. They've proven that. And until we have new leadership, well, it's not going to stop. You know, the old saying goes is that Jesus, uh, or rather, let me say that again. The shepherd giveth his life for the sheep, not the other way around. Sure. Good shepherd, man. It's par fucking parable. I'm, I'm, ca I'm Catholic. I don't know. Shepherds are fucking everywhere. Look, I went to shepherd. Right, don't get me rams. started. <laughs> ram Mart, you can get a vaccine there. All right. Oh, for sure. Also, uh, just so you know, our audience is really loving what we're doing. We are so popular with dogs. Oh, my God. We trend I've really so well. Many dogs hear our show and bar bark so much with uh, what I'm assuming is joy. Uh, anyway, you know, enough of that yeah. bullshit. Um, before we get into today with uh, our discussion, a couple things. Mm -hmm. Number one, check out our Patreon. We publish exclusive content to there every single week, except for last week because we had some. Uh, it was it was disjointed week for me being out, but this week we're gonna have exclusive content on there. I'm gonna be talking uh, about an interesting gentleman uh, that I met in Maine, who is a 70 year old man who drinks beer and shoots birds, and it's a great story, and you're not gonna want to miss it. Um, I know John's sitting over here just getting jealous about shooting birds and drinking beer. So um, check it out. We've got a bunch of other stuff on there, too. Um, and you'll also get a sticker if you pledge a certain amount. So check that out. Uh, we always really appreciate your support. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't want to. Five dollars might be a barrier to entry of people. So I, I want them to I want to get them to the website first. You can you can begin, you can begin as, low as, as low as a dollar. And hear our beautiful voices for even longer every week. If that's not incentive mm -hmm. enough, I don't know what is. But um, along those same lines, one thing we did want to mention, John put this out on the Twitter machine uh, last week, but we are going to start diversifying our content a little bit more. We have tried to focus on all of Appalachia. I think we've landed in West Virginia a number of times, including this episode, but wanted to let you all know out there that we are going to be pushing for things outside of West Virginia too to cover the whole region places like Virginia, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, Ohio, all the damn, all of, we'll all of the Appalachian states and so if there are suggestions for things you want to hear people you want to hear from, topics you want covered let us know uh, but just know that we hear you and we are uh, we are going to reach all corners of Appalachia no matter what yeah, that's another big thing, Chuck, is we, we try to kind of post on social media about who do people want to see. Do us a favor. If you want to see them on there, tell them. Tell them that you want you want to hear them on App Pod Latchet. That helps us tremendously get into contact with people. Because, I mean, I know we come off as these, like, major celebrities, but it turns out we're not. So <laughs> it's a little bit harder to get people's attention. If you really want people like, for instance, I've, we got a ton of requests for Tyler Childers, Corey Booker, uh, 50, 50 on Joe Manchin. <laughs> but if you want these people, <laughs> if you want these people on the podcast, tweet at them, send them a message, let them know. I'm not saying harass them. Please don't do that. But I'm just saying, let them know that we exist and that you want to hear yeah, us I mean, talk to them. That's how we got a number of the people we've already had on the show. Uh, I mean, Chris Hamby came because of a yeah. suggestion from a friend in Tennessee. So um, that's how we find some of the best people that we didn't even know before then that were out there. So really always appreciate those suggestions. But yeah, that's the other thing. We don't know everybody. Contrary to uh, popular, you know, there, there's, there's, <laughs> there's so much hidden talent in this region that there's, you know, there's people we didn't know. I would say probably what seventy percent of our guests so far, uh, we didn't know them at all. Really, uh, we knew of David Morris, but that was because we listened to his music. We didn't actually know him. Uh, so I mean, it, it's it's tough whenever uh, you know you're dealing with a whole region, but you know, we do what we can. But if you know somebody, let them know that you want to hear them on here. Let and let us know. Send us a DM. Send us an email. Later, Rip, Tater hit us, Chip. Hit us up on our website, appodlatchet.com. And, uh, yeah, let us know. But, uh, anyway, John 
today we're going to be hitting up a pretty recent subject. In fact, I, I quite honestly, I didn't even know about this um, until a few days ago when uh, news blanketed the covers of all the non-existent physical newspapers. But uh, we're talking about something called a Hyperloop. And I want you to uh, maybe give our listeners sort of a background, like why the hell are we talking about a Hyperloop? What the hell is a Hyperloop? Uh, why is it relevant to Appalachia? What's the deal? First off, <clears throat> now I know there's a misconception because I look like a scientist. I am not a scientist, okay? I, I'm not an engineer. I Actually, I am a scientist. I have a political science degree. So uh, Reminder to insert uh, laughter. I guess... <clears throat> Uh, you're welcome. Uh, hyperloops, I'm going to try my best on this. Hyperloops are essentially uh, intended to get people from point A to point B at the same speed or faster as planes with very low turbulence it's on the ground. It, I believe, is it, it electromagnetic? Magnetic right, which is some spooky shit to me uh, beyond my comprehension. Uh, but it's something that came about because Elon Musk in 2013 produced a paper uh, that talked about how he believes the Hyperloop is possible. He started a company, two other companies started, uh, one of them being Hyperloop One, that ended up being kind of the leader, the forefront of the Hyperloop. That was then purchased by who we're gonna talk about today, which is Virgin. Uh, they purchased it and I think reformed it in 2017. Uh, they're now the Virgin Hyperloop One which is, as we're going to mention today, coming to West Virginia. Yeah, and so we should state that it is going to be a certification center and essentially a testing ground, um, because I think, as John implied, the Hyperloop is not really even a thing right now. It's sort of a a project in a, a testing phase. Um, it's a system, like we mentioned, uses magnetic levitation. It allows like, for near-silent travel in a giant loop, essentially, um, the theory behind it being that you could travel from New York City to Washington, D.C. in 30 minutes, which would be twi twice as fast as a commercial jet. Um, that's sort of the idea behind it, similar to high-speed rail, but a little bit faster. Um, and so the reason why I think John mentioned that it's relevant is that West Virginia, um, of I think maybe 19 other states or 17 other states, competed. 17, 17 other states. Other states. Competed for this and were chosen as the site to uh to have this certification center development facility across 800 acres yeah i mean uh the one thing i do want to clarify though is although it is kind of still in the uh testing mode they have tested it's called xp1 uh they have tested this and actually shown that they've been able to do a pod that's levitating through the uh, you know electromagnetic magnetic uh, structure, but they've never done a passenger pod, which is why they're coming to West Virginia and, and building this because they're hoping to get yeah, to that exactly. next point. Um, it's going to be on you know 800 acres of land. It spans through Tucker and Grant counties near Mount Storm. A um, couple other details, just in the, as background, WVU Business Center calculated the total economic impact of it would be around 48 million dollars a year so um presumably a really big economic boon um if these numbers are, are accurate and um to, construction would begin 2022 certificate safety certification by 2025 and operation by 2030 so about a 10-year project um it, really big announcement i think it got national news uh the governor did a whole thing about it because this was again very competitive project involved virgin a really uh internationally renowned company, Richard Branson, yada, yada, yada. So it's a big thing. Um, John, I think the first thing, what we're going to be talking about today are the pros and cons of this. Because this like this has the potential to be a really big deal for West Virginia, a really important thing, but also um, carries with it a lot of baggage. And I think it's something that, um, like we said, we didn't really know we'd be talking about this this week, but so much... <laughs> Uh, hot takes, just opinions in general of people being interested in this, opposed to it, supportive of it, not sure about it on social media and, and otherwise, and just hearing from listeners, we wanted to kind of break it down a little bit for you, give our takes on it, and talk about it and kind of get that conversation started. Because this is something that 
you know, I think falls within the category of what we like to talk about. You know, what what is something that could potentially, we're not saying well, but could potentially move the region forward, help the region out. Um, and so that's that's why we're on it today. And so, John, what are you, what was so? What's your initial take on this, um, given your background in the state and just like your experience in this? Like, what do you think? Like, good, bad, indifferent? Well, I have to say, I didn't uh, when. I will fully clarify that the our Twitter posted congratulations West Virginia with this tweeted out. I'm the yeah. one who posted that. It wasn't Chuck. It, it was me. But it's because I didn't think that this would be as polarizing of a topic as it is. Uh, maybe that wasn't what you thought, Chuck. But the, to me, when I first read this, it was like obviously good for West Virginia. I didn't look into it any more past that at that point. Then we started to get comments back. Uh, really kind of giving uh, maybe a, a better light to the situation that I didn't know about, you didn't know about. So it's one of those things that I was able to kind of grow my opinion. Initially, thought this was great for the state. I, I think, or I thought it was one of those things that was going to bring uh, people in. It was going to bring technology in. It was going to secure broadband for that area because they're definitely not going to be able to do any of that without broadband. But then I, you know, now I see on the other side, there are negative aspects to this, which may or may not outweigh it. I'm not sure. Uh, but to me, on its face, I would say it is a somewhat positive move for the state. Now, we'll talk about the negatives in, I'm sure, just a couple minutes. But on its face, I think it is a positive um, that could easily go south. I, yeah, I think that's a good way of framing it. And so let's start with the positives, move into the negatives, and kind of like talk about what we think we need to see from it. Um, the positives just at the outset, first of all, you get a lot of attention to West Virginia and positive attention. That's at the outset. And that seems like a little thing and maybe in some respects it is, but it's an important one. Uh, of all these other states, this, this company chose West Virginia and that's a big deal. And it allows for something besides the energy extraction industry to gain a foothold in the state and something that's innovative. And, and that's really important because it can allow for different industries to potentially flourish in the state. Um, you have something that is a brand new technology that is not developed really at all. And that's, you know, to me, it presents a tremendous amount of opportunity for the state. And that is exciting because that is not something that we see very often or really at all, quite honestly, for West Virginia. Yeah, and like I said, we'll we'll mention the negative things we'll, about we'll this. I will say that I reached out to, yeah, uh, I reached out to lawmakers in the state that I'm friends with or I know to get their opinions on this. Chuck, I got to say the majority of them were for this move for West Virginia. They were very supportive of it. I mean, and let me just say most of them being on the Democratic side. So it wasn't like I just reached out to a bunch of conservative lawmakers and, you know, that they love this idea because they're the ones essentially going to be looked at as, you know, enacting it. But Democrats seem to like it, too. Uh, one specifically said it was a really good location for something yeah, like it, this. Well, and it, I guess, like, especially if you're in a lawmaking position, it's hard to look at a $48 million economic impact and ignore it. Um and that, that's the big thing yeah. there. I mean, that's for over 10 years, that's $480 million, uh, half a billion almost. That's huge. Um, that I, I think, like, uh, it just, it's, it would hard, it'd be hard to be against it inherently if you're a lawmaker, I think, just with those facts alone and knowing that the state is starving for new industry and starving for innovation. Um, that I, that would be my perspective from that end, and I I do think that there are, when you look at this, I mean, any type any time you have major infrastructure development, even if it's private company doing a test run, like that's going to attract other business, going to attract jobs, um, it's going to attract people's interest in the region and in the state. They're going to look at this and say, okay, why did Virgin go with West Virginia versus these other states that maybe you know are doing better economically? Maybe we should investigate in that. Maybe we should look into that too. So there, there are some things that I, I think that um, uh, our future, or 
I think that are kind of trying to lay the seeds for the future of the state, which could be good. Um, again, this is all very, very new, very speculative, but I think just like looking at the numbers, looking at the facts behind it, it's really easy to see the benefits. Well, and not to mention, I mean, I, I know <laughs> we talked about it off, off camera and off, off recording, but, and I know that you're going to bring up, uh, what is it like hero worship or whatever, but it does, and I don't think anybody can negate this, it does bring one of the world's leading entrepreneurs to these, this state. I mean, you could, anybody can talk shit on this guy, Richard Branson, but he is, he has a lot of money. He's created a lot of companies, which in fact create a lot of jobs. Now, that doesn't mean he's done everything perfectly. I'm not ever, I don't, I'm not going to stand up for the guy. I'm just going to say, a lot of people have been clamoring to bring people here. And this is a guy who on his face yeah. could do yeah, that. And I think like the big sentiment here from us, like it's good to be inherently skeptical, but we, we don't want to be immediately cynical. We're like, we said, we're going to get into the negatives. We, we've said that already many times, uh, but we don't want to be immediately dismissive because you and I both know how, starved west virginia is for something good along the lines of a jobs front and just like like diversifying the economy starved to death and so i think when those opportunities present themselves uh it's important to be careful it's important to examine it thoroughly and understand like making sure that it benefits the state and the people but it's important that like this stuff is happening i will say that i think it's important that this kind of thing is happening because it shows potential for west virginia and Appalachia. Living here, living in Appalachia my entire life, one thing I have learned is that the people of this region need, they need a chance. They need an opportunity the most out of any place in this country. They need opportunity. But when certain opportunities come about, people become very skeptical immediately without doing any research, without looking at, at it, they, on, they look at just the proposal and say something has to be right. wrong here without actually knowing what's going on. I'm not saying that the Hyperloop is gonna be one of these things that is massive for West Virginia. I'm just saying that honestly, none of us, I don't even think the lawmakers know enough about this to deem it as a good or bad thing. But I can tell you this, the people who speak the loudest are those who do not like this idea. And that tends to be a reoccurring theme, especially in states like West Virginia. Everybody pleads to get an opportunity, but then they start to argue against that opportunity. I've never, I don't understand it. it it's self-defeating. I understand that not every opportunity is worth taking, but every opportunity is not something that you should shoot down either. So it's a balance that West Virginia has to learn. They've been screwed over so many times in the past. The region has been screwed over so many times in the past. I get why people are leery, but at some point you can't look at coal and constantly scream at it and say, you're old news, we need something new. And then when something new comes in say, yeah, but no, not you, we can't do that. Yeah, yeah we can't do I that. I totally agree. I think that's an important part and I think, um again what, one of the biggest things is it demonstrates the potential even if this doesn't end up being the, a massive yeah. jobs boom even if it doesn't end up being like this end all be all thing it demonstrates potential it shows that companies are willing to invest and that's a big deal and that's something that's important and it's something that isn't always sexy on its face right even though the hyperloop you know you throw that term around pretty sexy but um it's not always sexy on its face but it shows progress, and I think that that's – like ultimately, I do think that that's a good thing inherently, um, which isn't to say that like I'm personally for it or against it. I, I think we just – we certainly need to learn more. Um, but yeah, I do I, – I, I'm with you. I think the attitude has to be open-minded, and it can't be immediately dismissive. And, there, and, and I think we'll get into some of the issues with it, but I – I want people to be open-minded about that, but cautious. That's that's my takeaway. Yeah, I mean, as soon as we post, I mean, you can go and check out our Twitter. I'm not saying that anyone specifically is just downplaying it, downplay it, but I can tell you this, like there are 
any time that something is coming to West Virginia, if it's not one of two things, there's only two things that I can think of that do not have that alarmist mentality. And one of it is solar because everybody has been screaming for that. I don't think that people would be uh, you know, thoroughly against it. And the second being cannabis. I think that the majority of West Virginians want cannabis to be legalized for the economic and probably for the social reasons. But every other thing that comes to this region or to this state constantly gets kind of bickered at without even having enough time to research it. I mean, within, and I'm the same way, I'm, I'm guilty of it. You know, within minutes already establishing an opinion without actually looking into something, that's not the way that this state is going to grow. And it's certainly not the way that we're going to impress other companies to come here. That That's the big thing out of this is the Hyperloop, I'll tell you this, probably will not create that many jobs for West Virginians. We, we don't have the expertise and we don't have that in the state. I talked to Ben Salengo about it whenever he kept talking about how he wanted to put high school um, and technical education at the forefront. And I argued back that we needed more professionals in this state because we focus too much on the other end of things. I think that this hyperloop is going to show that. I think it's going to show that I'm right, which I love being right. So that's great. I sound like Donald Trump now, but the big thing here is we have to give it a chance, even if the best thing that comes out of it is more broadband and more technology coming to the state, because I guarantee you that that's going to increase our, you know, the ability to sell West Virginia and to sell Appalachia to other people to come here. Yeah, it's, that's, those are all good points. Um, well, let's pivot, though, to the negative. The dark to the side, dark side. Of course. Well, there's a lot. And I think, so, to premise this, any, anything like this is always going to have them. And you just you have to, you know, consciously weigh negatives versus positives. So some of the ones that I look at initially are, well, what is the benefit to West Virginians? And right now it's unclear. Um, I would have to yes, assume. Yes, that is true. If you look at, like, other states that are competing – the reason why they probably picked West Virginia, I'm not speaking from any point of knowledge per se, but just having experience understanding how incentives are negotiated um, with corporate incentive packages, I would imagine that the governor cut a pretty sweetheart deal with Virgin to allow them to build this facility here and pay a very, very low tax burden. That would just be my guess. And so... You know, that carries with it a lot of things. I think corporate welfare is, is a is huge topic of, of um, debate. And I think there's – I think it's just – it's a necessary evil, sadly, to get certain things in states. Like you have to cut a deal or else they're going to go somewhere else. That's shitty, but that's that's the nature of the beast. But um, at some point, you got to think, like, what's the, what's the benefit to West Virginia from a tax standpoint because you're giving up a lot of land. And so that kind of builds to the next point, which is like – we have seen the extraction industry take the natural beauty away from the state. Coal, strip mining, you know it. Uh, Marcellus Shale, same thing. And so I think there's been a lot of concern about, like, wh like how much is this going to tear through Pocahontas or through Grant and Tucker County? Um, what's it, yeah. like, what is that impact going to be, and what is it going to be on the people around there? Because 800 acres is a lot of land. It never you're getting to that area because that area of West Virginia is kind of the middle of nowhere, but it has a lot of potential. So uh, it's going to be interesting if that ever comes out. PNG is a really good one that I think of whenever it comes to West Virginia giving up a lot to get a company. They gave up hundreds of millions of dollars of tax revenue to get PNG to the Eastern Panhandle. And the problem with that being that the Eastern Panhandle is the one part of the state that's already flourishing. So that was a huge issue. And, you know, that's an issue here is this is kind of the middle of the no of nowhere. How many people are actually going to be helped versus how many people are going to have to be moved into that area? Right. And, and I think like there's going to be some math that they'll throw out. I'm sure that will show a net benefit, like the economic impact yeah. but at the same time. You got to understand those are just big numbers. They don't talk about the impact on real people's lives. And, and I think that's something that's always, always a consideration. And so one of the things I did want to highlight on this, I mean, we, we touched on, on other stuff. We, we don't, 
I don't think at this point have enough details about it to really, I think, make educated judgments on the environmental impact mm -hmm. on, you know, the, the, uh, economic impact at this point. But one thing I did want to point out when I was doing some research on this, John, um, research. looking into this deal, which there's not a lot of public details about, but the land that they're using was donated by a company called Western Pocahontas Properties. Um, if you look into this company, John, it sounds pretty obscure, right? Western Pocahontas, okay. Some of the board members are people like S. Reed Morian, who used to be, and I think still is, with Natural Resource Partners. If that sounds familiar, it is a coal company. Uh, Cor Corby Robertson III. Uh, he is with a Texas-based private equity firm, but his family owns, and I actually think he's still with, a billion-dollar energy-focused private equity group called Quintana Capital, which is associated with Natural Resource Partners. Um, and Kevin Craig, who is the executive vice president of WPP, of, of um, Western Pocahontas Properties, but I also believe is the executive vice president of Natural Resource Partners which it really sounds like they're the same thing almost, if not exactly. Um, and Kevin Craig was is actually, a, I believe, a former Democrat member of the House of Delegates in West Virginia. So here's the other thing, John. Now, this is already kind of telling you, okay, like there's big coal interests in this land. They're giving it up. Why the fuck are they giving it up? We don't know. Is it out of the goodness of their hearts? It's possible, but I don't recall many things coming out of the goodness of many coal company executive hearts, just as a point of fact. But the other thing, John, that I found is Kevin Craig is also on the board of West Virginia University. And when this property was donated, it was donated to the WVU Foundation as part of the deal with Virgin. I don't have any other details other than that. I just wanted to throw out all those factual details there because I do find it a little curious, that's all. What is what is this stake in the game for them? What do they stand to benefit from this? Do they have a financial incentive? Or do coal companies, do coal companies have a financial incentive with Virgin or with the WV Foundation, whatever? I don't, I'm not trying to posit conspiracy theories. I just want to put what was publicly available information out to you all let you make your own judgments and see where it goes. That's all. Look, I've got a judgment right now. West Virginia University, Gordon Gee as their president, have tried to take over several entities across the state, one of them being hospitals. If you look, they're buying out small regional hospitals, renaming them WVU Hospital. They are becoming- Camden Clark. <clears throat> Camden Clark is now WVU affiliated. They are gonna continue to do this. They're also doing other spaces. It would not shock me if the agreement was that the, that the Hyperloop becomes part of some type of WVU system, that's A fucking <laughs> PRT. God damn it. It all comes back. God fucking damn well, it. To be fair, I don't know how you could, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how you could create this without, without giving the PRT really the, the thanks it deserves. Well, and for those of you who are listening who may not be familiar, the PRT stands for Personal Rapid Transit. They are little boxes on a monorail at the great West Virginia University to transport you from different campuses. Uh, and they have a tendency to break down and be a, quote, shit show at times. Yeah, they're shit boxes. In my experience. In my experience. <laughs> they're shit boxes. Like, <laughs> they, they break down a lot. But the big thing that... I think is going to happen here is West Virginia's WV is going to come to an agreement with Virgin Hyperloop One or whatever the hell their name is anymore to get them in the door, whether or not it's through faculty or through internships or whatever, WVU will attach its name to this because WVU attaches its name to everything. It would not shock me if one day we rename the capital West Virginia University at the Charleston Capitol. It's <laughs> that that's what we're moving towards in the state. It's a really sad thing. It's one of those things that's that's I don't think people are, are really taking seriously enough. One guy in particular who I agree with nothing on except for this is Mike Folk. If you don't remember, he ran for governor in West Virginia. He is a 
nutcase. I don't remember that. <laughs> exactly. He's a nutcase. Uh, he knows that I think he's a nutcase. And this is... Hey, Mike, if you're listening, <laughs> John thinks you're a nutcase, but I think you have one good idea. He has one good idea, and that's the fact that WVU and Gordon Gee are trying to take over too many entities. I think that that's what's happening here. Plus... I think that the coal companies have a stake in this. They don't want to, you know, they don't, they, they're not we, giving we know stuff they up. Do. They're not giving anything Hell up. Hell no. They're not. Hell no. 800 fucking acres. Are you kidding me? Hell no. no. It's the, it's so it, and it's the side of a former coal mine, by the way. Right. Um. So one could argue like, is this a good way to repurpose a coal mine? Possibly. Maybe. But, Again, I will revert back to my original point, which was when have the coal company executives ever had the best interests of the state of West by God, Virginia as a top priority? I can count on this many fingers. And for those of you not watching the YouTube video, I'm holding up zero fingers. (laughs) Yeah, this is... um... This is going to be interesting. I don't think that, I mean, obviously we're not taking a position on this because we honestly don't know. Uh, but, yes. but there, as we've explained, there are some positive, there are some negatives. One thing I do want to mention, Chuck, is I think a huge negative here, and I think maybe somebody alluded to this, but think about back in the day, right? When coal mines were, were really big, people moved to those areas to work for the coal mines because they were good jobs. Well, Look at what's going to happen. People are going to move to a little area, Mount Storm. They're going to move to to Tucker and what's – oh, why am I blanking? Grant. Tucker and Grant counties, right? They're going to move there. What happens when Hyperloop 1 shuts down? Well, I would imagine they'd skedaddle. How? It's 200 families that are going to be – have no jobs with no resources. Uh, I'm talking about the people that move there for the jobs. But if they're West Virginians, I mean, if they move there, like if they buy homes and they, you know, they build real estate, that's what I'm, that's one thing that worries me is that, is this going to be, are we going to see the future as these tech bubbles that shut down and then abandon cities? Like that's, that's what worries me here. Are we going to have a coal mine 2.0? No, yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. Well, and I also think like it's going to, you know, for the people that already live there, it'll jack up property. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, gentrify people out, even in rural areas. That's the big part. Um, but I, I think that's a good segue into some of the things that we want to see with this or we want to know more about. Obviously, we don't want to know more about everything with it, um, really, before we can make a judgment, before we can talk more about it. But one thing I would personally like to see is, number one, a local jobs guarantee for West Virginians, union jobs. This is ideal, by the way. Um, union jobs guarantee uh, in perpetuity or at least for, you know, uh, like have at least like a date on it so people can have that expectation. But I would want guaranteed jobs as long as the company is in existence. Um, And I would want there to be um, some local input. I think that's the big thing with stuff like this. Nobody knows um, that area better than the people who live in Tucker and Grant County than the local leaders there and and the people that have lived there all their lives and so when you have big projects like this come in a lot of times the people with the money dictate the decision making and and i I would hate to see that be this time here um so i would love to see local input and like a local um agreement with the company um kind of like nashville did something pretty similar to it uh, I believe when Amazon came into town in Nashville, they did a, a basically like a community compact. I'm blanking on the name right now, but it was it was between like working class people in the company to make sure there was jobs guaranteed, that type of thing. I'll look it up and I'll post it. But anyway, like there needs to be some community input because even you and I, John, like we don't live in Tucker and Green County. We don't know that region like the people that live there. And I think that their input should be the ones that's valued because this is taking up a lot of space there. It's going to be very destructive and, and just like, you know, it, it, the huge thing is going to transform that region. So the people that live there should have an, a say in it and should, should have skin in the game and should have some guarantees. Big thing for me is I want to know from uh, either governor justice or the legislature, whoever actually worked, the, <laughs> who actually worked this deal, because there are deals that come just from the governor's office. And there are a lot of deals that come from the legislature. They, they, 
I think a lot of people put blame on, I'm, I'm actually going to protect Jim Justice here. A lot of people put blame on the governor's office for these things, but a lot of it does come from the legislature as well and development authorities. To me, I want to know why this was so secret. Why didn't we know about this? It wasn't on anyone's radar. And then all of a sudden they're coming to West Virginia. Why wasn't yeah. this talked about? If it's even on any radar, it is the job of legislators, of representatives to come back and tell your community what's going on. They're not doing that. They're failing at that. Both sides of the aisle. It doesn't matter who they are. If you're not doing that, you're failing. This to me, all the things that you've pointed out in terms of the things going on with the land, that's what makes this stink even worse. Yeah, it does. Uh, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and pass a judgment here. I am, I would be shocked if Jim Justice's office was not the ones quarterbacking this. Number one, because the people that own this land are coal company people, and he, we just know of all his ties to that industry. But because this is this is a fairly common thing for governors to do to negotiate business tax incentives to get companies into the state. Uh, but the difference there being that typically there's more transparency with like what the tax abatement situation looks like, like how much are they foregoing in taxes for that for whatever time period and and what what is the, the deal that they're getting. And so that's um, that I would I would be willing to put money on it. that Jim Justice's office was involved with that because they were pretty quick to put out a very fawning statement, too. So, oh, I don't think that he's not in on it. I mean, if, if you look at like for P&G, there were a ton of legislators in on that. I think even the legislators had more to do with it than Jim Justice. That's the only thing I'm pointing out here is the fact that there are people in the legislator, uh, legislature that are extremely powerful when it comes to doing these things in this state. They're, sure. they're well known for doing it. And, you know, let's be frank, Jim Justice hasn't negotiated a good deal probably since 91. So I think he's going to have to have some help here. Uh, that's not. Tr I heard that he got half off on his Sunrise skillet at Bob Evans. That is true. One time he went to Sheets and got two for one hot dogs. I forgot about that. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, and, and to your point, though, I mean, Kevin Craig, former House of Delegates member, was on is the executive vice president of, of the company that made the land deal. So, I, and I, I, I don't have the exact dates of when he was in the legislature, but I mean, it was fairly recent. Wasn't he a Democrat? Still, yeah, he yeah he's a Democrat, and I'm sure that he still has a ton of relationships there. So I imagine that 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 discussion did trickle down there. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's one of those things that we're not going to probably know all of. And the, the other big thing that I want to know out of all of this, why are we not hearing from the communities in those areas? Like, I, yep. they're being silenced, in my opinion, if they're not allowed to put out their ideas on what should happen, are they guaranteed to, to see resources come from this? What type of things are they being told? And why are we not hearing more from either them or their representatives? That's what worries me. Those are the questions we need answers to, for sure. Well, we'll we're gonna keep our finger on the pulse of this issue for sure. Uh, I, you know, like I said, I think construction is supposed to begin in twenty twenty two. Overall, that's not that long away. We're gonna be finding out more information about it when we do. We will be keeping you all informed and making sure that you at least know what our hot takes are on it. Will West Virginia there, have a new governor I, then? Will West Virginia have a new governor in 2022? What happens if well, they do? What if Governor Sol what would Governor Solango do? Well, I would I would guess that he probably would support this. I would assume economic impact, but don't want to speak for him. He's welcome on this show anytime. Um, Bet on it. He loved it. That's right. That's right. He loved it. Loved it every minute of it, <laughs> and so did we. Um, <laughs> he, he has a stop time. Yeah, he calls me every night. Oh shit! That, got, <laughs> that's him now. Hello? All right, Ben. All right. Well. <laughs> Sorry, we had to remove that segment. No. Um, God, I. Every time we do this, there's always so much shit I gotta. Cut off. <laughs> at least the night before. <laughs> oh shit. Anyway, well, all right. Well, let's. Well, that's that's the hyperloop, uh, aka the glorified PRT. Um, <laughs> that's not a official opinion by me, but maybe it is. Uh, but anyway, we'll keep y'all updated but it's been a while I, I feel like it's been forever um since i've done like a legit episode with you even though it's been only two weeks yeah i'm sure that you've you've been stockpiling beef the size of mount everest so why don't you lay down a thick slab on the grill 
beef with Big John. I got beef. We're going to South Carolina. That's where we're headed. South Carolina, put your hands up. We don't always go there, but Pete today, <laughs> yeah, take your shirt off, twist it around your head. Uh, well, like everybody helicopter. from West Virginia does because you know they love Myrtle Beach. Beach. Here we go. Uh, we're, Beach. Not, we're not talking about Myrtle Beach today. We are talking about God damn it. someone who is in the running for worst senator in the United States. That would be. That is about fifty people. But he uh, he's at so the you know. he's at the top of the list. It's him and Mitch McConnell. They are just sitting right next to each other. It's Lindsey Graham. Graham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. All right, let's uh, do it. Yeah. Uh, Lindsey Graham, if you haven't heard, is in a very... An asshole. <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I'm jumping the gun. Yeah. Jumping the gun. Uh, he's an asshole, but he also is in a very highly contested race with Jamie Harrison, who I've actually had the pleasure of meeting. So I'm not going to have beef with him today. He hasn't well, done it. Humble any... brag though here. Wow. Uh, hey, celebrity. Look, if I can meet somebody of that status, I'm going to let you know. Also met Jason Kander. I guess I'm just going to keep throwing names out. Lindsey Graham though, it sh was supposed to debate Jamie Harrison last week. He took a pummeling the first debate. Jamie Harrison easily won that debate. If you go back and look, he was the only person that made points. He was the only person who actually had plans to establish anything. And he's the only person who brought their own plex plexiglass case to put around them so they didn't get COVID from their competitor. So I think it's a checkmark, checkmark, checkmark win for Jamie Harrison. I, I love that every all these politicians are now <laughs> traveling around like they're in the Pope Mobile. And I just want to say, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't have a lot to say about the Pope and Catholicism in general, but the Pope figured it the fuck out with the Pope Mobile. He knew it a long time ago. They knew it. They long, they knew they, it. But what did they know, and when they know it? That's the question. Anyway, conspiracy theories. Why didn't they tell us? Done. Anyway, Lindsey Graham was supposed to debate him. I'm saying supposed to because it never happened. If you don't, you know, if you live under a rock and you don't know, Donald Trump tested positive for the coronavirus. So didn't his wife and a lot of other people in the White House, especially people that Lindsey Graham works with on a daily basis. Lindsey Graham was asked by his competitor, Jamie Harrison, to take a COVID test before their debate, which to me seems like a pretty reasonable thing, right? If you're around people with COVID, you should get tested. That's kind of the thing that we've created, the protocol. Yeah, I took one before I went to Maine, did the nose thing and everything. Right, I had to take one before I even got surgery. I mean, it's just the way of life right now. Unfortunately, it's the way of life for, you know, mortals like us, but not for Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham refused to take a COVID test. He said he didn't need to. In fact, Chuck, he didn't need to because he had a doctor's note. That was his excuse. If his doctor was able to tell him, I guess telepathically, that he didn't have COVID, he didn't have to get tested. But Listen, I can tell you <laughs> firsthand how easy it is to get a doctor's note. I got them all the time in elementary school. Yeah, I mean, it's not that hard. Lindsey Graham, if, if you don't know, is one of the most likely to lose senators right now, if you look at polling, like it's 50-50, but in South Carolina, that's a major deal. Lindsey Graham didn't want to debate Jamie Harrison. That's what happened that night. He didn't want to look like an idiot compared to the guy across from him, which he already was the first night. Lindsey Graham didn't want to have to go on and spew his conservative bullshit again. I'm not saying all the conservative stuff is bullshit. I'm saying what Lindsey Graham spouts is bullshit. This is a guy who once went off on how bad of a guy Donald Trump was and now licks his boot clean every time he sees him. That's the problem with Lindsey Graham. Not to mention, Lindsey Graham is a bona fide fucking racist. I'll say that on the book every single day. In fact, bona fide. In fact he just the other day told, and this is a quote, told minorities that they could be safe and be, <laughs> be uh, I forget how he said it now, they could be successful in South Carolina as long as they were conservative and not liberal. Well, gosh, if, if all the black people knew that, then, we, then racism would be gone. My God. <sighs> How, right. How they only know Lindsay. Lindsay. What a what a man, what a what a guy. It turns out if there's an R next to your name, they won't be racist to you. That's what he's saying. That, that this is the problem with people like Lindsey Graham. He has no backbone. He has no morals. He hasn't had it in twenty years. That is 
what I hope loses Lindsey Graham this election, I don't endorse many people, but I think we know who I want to win in that race. The other well, This is not an endorsement. No, it's not an endorsement, but it's a Lindsey Graham is terrible. I mean, <laughs> I think I because we can't endorse. I yeah, I'm not endorsing, but I I'm probably getting as close as I'm allowed. The other big thing is Lindsey Graham has always been on the side of his big thing is you should respect politics. You should respect the person across from you. But unfortunately, that was 10 years ago, Lindsey Graham. Now, the other day, he just told liberals, we will kick your ass. That's a quote from him. This is a guy who couldn't win a fight with a fucking dead donkey. This is the problem. <laughs> uh, this is... This is the problem with people like Lindsey Graham. Uh, they think they're hard asses until push comes to shove. He's one of those guys that um, if you ever watch basketball games, the I, I love LeBron, but he's always good at this. He pisses the other person off to get into a fight and then throws teammates out in front of him. That's Lindsey Graham. Uh, I can only hope that America makes the right decision and that South Carolina makes the right decision on November 3rd. We'll wait to see. But this week, beef with Lindsey Graham in South Carolina. I hope he hears it. Send Lindsay home. Boom. Product placement. Anyway, well, that, that's a solid beef. I agree, of course, because um, Lindsey Graham's an asshole and doesn't deserve the title of United States Senator. And I hope that uh, he loses. Anyway, thank you all for listening. That's it. We're going to be back next week with more AppPod Latch. Again, always follow us on the social media and check out our website, AppPodLatch.com. Shoot us an email, AppPodLatch at gmail.com. YouTube it. It's going to have a link because we can't do a custom <coughs> domain name yet there until we have 100 subscribers. So get on that. I know we have well over 100 listeners, so you all need to subscribe. God damn it. <laughs> We love you. Thank you. <laughs> you do you. You do what you want. We'll be we'll be back next week.